And a welcome back to Sports Weekly on IEMG. I'm your host, Pep Fernandez. You know, if you've been watching Sports Weekly the last several years, we like to salute and honor our local league champions. And this guy has been on uh, this segment a lot because he's won a lot of league titles. Lund Son of Indian Springs. When you think about his cross-country league championships his track and field league championships, and he won a wrestling league title this year. He had 11 at Indian Springs. Man, that is a lot of league championships. And this year in track and field uh, for the Coyotes, the boys and girls track and field teams both won Mountain Valley League titles for the second consecutive season. And what's even more impressive, as you're about to hear from Coach Son, is the fact that they had a lot of young athletes, freshmen and sophomores, uh, competing at the varsity level this year, but they still found a way to win the league title in the MVL for the boys and the girls. So let's hear from head coach Lun Son from Indian Springs High School as we salute another league champion here in the city of San Bernardino. And you guys know we love celebrating our local league champions, and they've done it again. The Indian Springs boys and girls track and field teams, your Mountain Valley League champions uh, for the second consecutive season. Join us here on the show, Lunson, the head coach of the Coyotes this past spring. And and Coach, first off, c congratulations. Um, I, I, before we kind of dig a little bit deeper into this team, I just know firsthand you had a lot of new athletes to track and field right were you were you pleasantly surprised um the success you had this year and ha how quickly these maybe freshmen and sophomore kind of adapted to uh, the, that varsity level oh we were definitely surprised our 80 percent of our team are made up of freshmen and sophomores and then the rest of them were well not the rest of them we maybe had like a handful of um returners on both the boys and the girls side the rest of them were all first year so this is a testament basically to the coaching staff that we have, not just myself, because, you know, we do have position coaches and whatnot, the sprints, hurdles, jumps, um, and throws. Uh, Coach Marcus Williams did a fantastic job with our young sprinters. They all bought in, and they are some of the hardest working athletes that I've ever had, basically, you know, in 20 years of coaching. In terms of our hurdlers, you know, Dylan Coe, one of my former athletes over at San G, he came back and started coaching with me this year. So he did a fantastic job with them as well. I, Anthony Carradine uh, took up the uh, the jumps and uh, Chris Chaddock basically uh, took up with the uh, the throws and whatnot. So it's just a culmination of all of us working together. You know, And I think I'm leaving out Terry Vega, Izzy Barra, and... Uh, Pedro Farrell who helped me with the distance. Yeah, a lot of coaches, coach. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'm blessed. Um, you know, John Chamberlain, um, you know, as well as the community and think Coach Terry Vega, she volunteering to come on to help. And the same thing with Pedro uh, Farrell, his sister and such as on the team. He's my former athlete. Even Izzy Abara, she ran for me over at San Gregonio. So all of us, it, it's fun having my former teammates and my former colleagues and such is working together to make it possible for us this year. So so back-to-back -back league champions, uh, boys and, and girls. Um, for, for both of the sides, the boys and girls, Coach, where, where do you think the strength was with this year's team for boys and girls? We were spread out. But to be honest with you, for the future, it's the sprints. And they're they're going to be one of the top ones, basically, within the area, if not in the state. Uh, Marcus Williams, he does a fantastic job with them. Dylan Coe does a fantastic job with the, uh, the hurdlers as well. So they both tag team and such in that department. Um, our main thing was just getting the rest of the coaches and such on campus to buy in to share kids. You know, we had a lot of uh, girls basketball players that came out, boys basketball players. So it's just kind of like, you know, how – it's the entire Indian Springs community that put this thing together. So it wasn't me by myself. You know, and I know you, you mentioned like strong freshmen, strong sophomores on this squad, but you, you had a couple special seniors as well. Julie Chipres, Eduardo Lara, right? You had some, some cross country runners who obviously translate, translate well to, to track and field as well. Can you talk about maybe some of those, those seniors you had again, you, very heavy on the young athletes, but you did have some really ta talented seniors. Yeah, we um, the characters basically of our seniors basically help build up the the young ones. In terms of Eddie Lara, he did a fantastic job of leading by example. Julie Chipres, 
she could have had a better season, but with her, she sustained a uh, soccer injury, basically, at the last day of practice, you know, as they were getting ready to, uh, you know, await their decision, basically, with a coin flip or the CIF thing, like one of her teammates and whatnot accidentally kicked her ankle. And so she was only able to practice once a week. But, you know, she still showed up and whatnot, you know, um, and rehab and whatnot and, you know, did the best that she could to help kind of lead the young athletes to say, hey, this is how you practice. The one that stepped up for us big time was Amir Bellamy. He's one of our um, hurdlers. He's only a junior this year, but that guy, there's not enough time in the day to get him tired. He was there every day, basically, you know, practicing like before practice. He's there after practice. On the weekends, he would sneak in and grab a couple of hurdles and such and, you know I mean, go at it. Um, I think he had a bad taste in his mouth basically a year prior to where he got beat for the CIF spot. And then that just kind of burned and was ingrained in his head to where like, hey, this ain't going to happen again. Um, even the youngin we had, they had like a lot of maturity. We had uh, Sokoto Islam a couple of years back. You know, he was so close to basically earning a scholarship and things like that. And he just needed a... Uh, I think an inch or so basically for the, the triple jump in order to, you know, to get an offer. And then COVID happened. Well, he was a senior back then, but this year we had his younger brother, who's a freshman. You know, he searched for me basically all year and whatnot. Hey, who's the track coach? Who's the track coach? And he came out and was like, oh, my goodness, he's a blessing in disguise. It's just the amount of maturity that um, TK, you know, it's his name, TK Islam that he has to lead basically the young group that, you know, I mean, that's on the team. Uh, even uh, Kiera Rivers, she won league basically in the 100, 200, and then came in second, the four by one, and then won league basically in the four by four. She's in my class as well, and her level of maturity because she had joined cross country and realized, wow, you guys really worked. <laughs> and she worked her way up from being like our number seven to our number two runner in cross country. And this is like the league champion in, uh, you know I mean? Yeah. In our sprints department. So that's just like a testament of some of their characters, you know, in terms of the athletes and such that we have. And it's hard because success leaves clues. So what it does is it ended up leaving the rest of the kids to say like, Oh my goodness, there's a lot of, a lot of good examples and such that are on the team basically to look after and just kind of to emulate. Oh, and one more person, basically, uh, Shanice Barnett. She's a basketball girl. I called her the unit because she was she was a sprinter, jumper, triple, you know what I mean? Triple jumper, high jumper, everything. A lot of points right in. there. Yeah, a lot of points came in. Like she, If she didn't win, she'll place like first or second. But she works hard. She has a great attitude and come in just smiling all the time and such, you know. And that, that's hard. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to find kids like that. Yeah. This year, we were just like full of characters, and I'm blessed to have them on the team. Did you have, you said you were pretty well balanced, but did you have a lot of individual league champions as well? We, yeah, we did, both on the the boys and the girls' side. I know Nemo Neal, he's only a sophomore, but I think I was mentioning more of like the upper, upperclassmen. But then again, like 80% of our teams are freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, I think on the boys' side, we had eight out of 15 events that were league champions. But on the girls' side, I believe we had four. The girls' side, it, it was uh, it was stacked, basically, and spread out within the league in terms of talent. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach, uh, listen, it, it sounds like the cupboard will not be bare at Indian Springs, but uh, it will not include you. You're, you're, you're taking your talents to be a teacher at Cajon High School. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, I was granted a transfer this year, basically. Um, Steve Embriani, I believe he stepped down over at, uh, at Cajon High School. So that leaves like the sports medicine department. Uh, it's, you know, they have an FTE and whatnot to fill. And that's my alma mater. I, you know, I mean, I left Cajon like about maybe 17 years ago as a volunteer coach and my dream had always been to where like, you know what, I, I want to build a good enough resume to come home and coach one day. So this is a home, like, you know, I mean, coming home event and such for me. So I'm excited about it. Uh, and there's a lot, of, I love the culture and such that's there. I'm familiar with the staff. I'm familiar with the types of students and whatnot. But my main thing is just kind of, you know, to go there and just carry out the vision of, you know, whatever the principal has and the administrator and things. 
and I've always been like that. <laughs> well, you, you hit the jackpot with ADs because you go from John Chamberlain at Indian Springs to Rich Imbriani at Cajon, man, uh, two, two of the best guys in the business. But I should say, in the meantime, uh, you're going to do some college coaching, right, with my boy Jim uh, Radigan out there at San Bernardino Valley College. Yes, sir. Uh, I was an assistant last year for Jim, uh, the cross-country team at Valley. So this year, hopefully, we get to do more, um, you know, post-pandemic, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some limitations and things. This year, we're excited. We got, like, a lot of new uh, runners and such coming in. I believe the last time I spoke to Jim, you know, we're in contact and such with, uh, with a, li a little bit more than a dozen. So that, you know what I mean, numbers and whatnot, it's a little bit... Uh, higher than what we had last year. Well, Coach, listen, I always appreciate your time. I might even bump bump into you out there at SBVC uh, this, this upcoming season. But congratulations on all the league titles at Indian Springs. How many, like if you count wrestling, cross country, how many league titles did you win? Um, off the top of my head, I think two and a half, the last two and a half years, what John Chamberlain told me was 11. <laughs> but I'm not sure if I had a, like more than that. But <laughs> 11 league title, titles. So. That is unbelievable. And again, we, we love celebrating our league champions here on IEMG. So, Coach, thank you so much. Always appreciate our conversations. I always appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing this again uh, down the road. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. That is Lun San, formerly of Indian Springs with the uh, track and field teams winning boys and girls Mountain Valley League titles this season. So congratulations to Coach Son and all the success at Indian Springs. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Sports Weekly. Make sure you subscribe to the IE Media Group YouTube channel. We'll have content all summer long as we build uh, up towards the high school football season. Week zero is August 19th. My name is Pep Fernandez. We'll see you next time on Sports Weekly on IEMG.